So is Fantastic Beasts Crimes of Grindelwald actually better than its garbage predecessor, or does the audience need to be obliviated? Obliviate! Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald is directed by David Yates, who also directed Order of the Phoenix through Fantastic Beasts. And here he's backed with his signature great recreation of the Harry Potter universe. This movie stars Eddie Redmayne, Johnny Depp, Jude Law, and Zoe Kravitz. So talking about this movie, there will be spoilers for the first Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. You have been warned! So the second film of the Fantastic Beasts is set in the late 1920s where Grindelwald has just escaped from prison and is up to all sorts of mischief. His mission is to find Credence before Dumbledore and Newt. So as with a lot of the Harry Potter films and a lot of the books, J.K. Rowling brings her signature themes here of tolerance and acceptance and also, you know, feeling like you don't belong in certain scenarios or situations and this movie is no exception in bringing out those themes, but the problem with this movie is dum, that, dum, dum. in my opinion, it is way overstuffed, way overcrowded, it attempts to do so many things that it doesn't do them very effectively. Way too many side stories. And in my opinion, I was so disappointed with this movie. This is by far the worst in the entire series. I am so disappointed in this film. My frustration is the fact that the author has a tendency to bring in information that is not supported in her original works and this seemed like with this she was a screenwriter and it seemed like she tried to bring validity to the crap that she makes up last minute <laughs> and as a avid Harry Potter reader and fan I did not appreciate it it's not supported it's she changes things okay she changes things about some spells and the way they work which is utter garbage so as a devout fan truly immensely frustrated with this film. J.K. Rowling, think about your fans. Come think on. about your fans and my God, this story, you know, like it deviated in so many different directions. And so like you just get lost because, you know, they try to put in so many callbacks to the Harry Potter mm -hmm. films. They try to, Partly. you know, bring up Hogwarts, make connections to Dumbledore, Flamel. his relationship with Grindelwald, right? But I mean, it, it, it really loses focus along the way because it attempts to bring up so many different storylines right. and then it seems like all the characters kind of go on their own journey mm -hmm. but then some of them are not even that interesting I mean not they well don't developed, go anywhere not well and explained. so with so many interruptions to so many of the characters flashbacks and then side stories it's just I, 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 I was bored a lot of the time to be quite there honest. There was the scene that it was really building up some hype and then they just threw in a side story and you're just like yeah, you're really kind of wondering where it's going, and finally you see it at the end, and even then it's not a good payoff. So yeah, I had pretty much the same reservations that you guys had. I mean, you guys basically said everything I would have said, right? Uh, the only things I have to add regarding the plot or are that the first 10 minutes were really exciting. And actually, I thought that the, that segment, right, it was, it's a jailbreak scene, that's not a spoiler, right? So I thought that that was better than the entire movie of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I totally agree with that. Yes. Uh, that, of first, that first, yeah, that first breaking from prison scene was so well shot, was really exciting. The mm -hmm. music, you know, fit perfectly with it. The lighting, the execution of everything, yeah, the and editing. The, and then Johnny Depp couldn't speak. Right, so maybe that was a good thing. <laughs> yeah, and it was actually really haunting in that regard, you know? Yeah, they yeah. really, uh, you know, the way that they captured Johnny Depp was mm -hmm. very, you know, like he was a very mystique kind of figure, you yeah, know? Yeah, so sure was. It was, it, was, it was really good. I did like this running joke about Tina's eyes. Okay, uh, yeah. that was kind of that was kind of nice, you know. Right, right. And then and then the beast. So my main critic, well, not my main, but one of my biggest criticisms of the first movie is that the beast to me felt like just a sideshow. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't really have a, a purpose. And in this movie, uh, some of the main beasts actually have a purpose. They're relevant. Um, I still can't stand the Niffler, okay, but he actually did something, you know, worthwhile yeah. in this movie. Yeah. And, and the, of the course, Niffler. the beast that looks like uh, you know Falcor from a never-ending story. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Do you? remember what he's called? I don't remember what he's called, but the one the that looks like a giant, you know, half lion, half dog, you know, I mean. Yeah, kind of like one of those Chinese His tail uh, was dragons. entrancing though. So I did definitely appreciate, that's a good observation, that the beasts actually take more of a, yeah. you know, center stage, it's actually but, about still, some of the beasts. but still, like, I had trouble relating to any of the characters or the beasts. 
I liked Credence's story arc in here. Uh, you guys might feel differently, but I thought he was maybe the most compelling, most interesting part of this movie, which I felt was really underdeveloped. Yeah, I, I really didn't care about any of the characters. Like I said before, uh, I had trouble relating to any of them. I, I think that for me, the highlight was Jude Law as Dumbledore, because I really feel like he embodied that character, which we're so familiar with, you know, from the previous films. Right. But I, snappy I feel was. like he didn't have a very strong presence in the film. Mm -hmm. Like, he could have done more. I think that the character should have been more present in the film. Dumbledore the, or Credence? The, the Dumbledore character. Dumbledore character. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, Credence, for me, you know, I think that Ezra Miller does good in the Credence role, but uh, I, I don't think there's anything really special yeah, there. Yeah, I, I like the idea of his conflict, for sure. But, like I said, underdeveloped, right? Yeah. And, and going back to Jude Law, I mean, his stage presence was evident, right? The moment yeah. he stepped on, on stage, yeah. you know, the first scene, you, know, you can hear it from the audience. They're like, wow. Jude yeah, Law, yeah, Dumbledore. yeah. And Johnny Depp is always solid, you know, but I mean, as far as like <laughs> Grindelwald as the character, as a villain, not memorable for me. I mean, Voldemort, yeah. you know, far and away is a much more memorable so, villain. So, Michelle, than I can tell Michelle is dying to say something. <laughs> you can disagree, Michelle. Go ahead. Um, so, when I first saw the trailer for this film and saw that Johnny Depp was in it, I was not pleased. I don't see him fitting in with the Harry Potter universe. And so I didn't even like his portrayal of Grindelwald. And lastly, I do want to mention that character Queenie, who I, f I feel like in the previous movie and in this movie, doesn't really do much at all. I don't know why she's in the movie, okay? The one thing I can say is that I like the way that they're trying to take her character finally in this movie. But even then, that comes at the very end. So yeah, I just wanted to throw her character in there. So I kind of talked about strongly it. disagree. <laughs> I didn't like the character. I felt her actions in this film were completely uncharacteristic as to how they portrayed her in the first film with no explanation. And no Why follow through that? and no connection. No follow through. And so, I mean, so, okay, so you talk about the first film, like, what was really different from the first to this film? Well, without spoiling it, I mean, in the first film, she's just very kind. She's and bubbly and bubbly, lively and sort of selfless, like ditzy at the same time. Selfless. Um, some of her actions, in, at the, specifically the beginning of the film, were like, mm, would she really do that for I could see that. I could see uh, that. But I, also, I guess what characters have to change, though, you know? I guess, but there was no segue, there was no explanation. It's just like, here's Queenie and she did the thing. And I, I actually but, did not like her acting. Right, well, it goes back to what Bethel said, right? Like, they, they just rushed a lot of things and they didn't really develop them very well. Because yeah. it was overstuffed with yeah. a lot of storylines. Oh, Without well. giving it away, there was at least seven side stories. Then they flip-flopped on one. I was like, really? Well, that was pointless. <laughs> And, and what about Nicholas Flamel? Like, why I is he in this movie? That, I thought they were going somewhere else with his character, and it he was just made an appearance. A joke. They made and him a joke. That's just one of the things I'm talking about. How they attempt to bring Harry Potter stuff into this, but it goes nowhere. As far as you know, me, I, I was a big uh, critic of the first film, where I thought that the CGI was terrible. It's not that much better here, but I do like the effects of them teleporting. Um, a lot of times they had premonitions going on, or or flashbacks going on, like in the background where they could see. So I I thought that was kind of cool. We mentioned the sound earlier, especially in the first 10 minutes. What did you guys think? I like the sound, you know. Um, I particularly like the musical score for this film because I appreciated how it's both exhilarating but also kind of like eerily low key in a lot of the scenes and served like as a nice backdrop to a lot of the conflicts that were happening. So I think that the music really saved some of my boredom throughout the movie. Um, but I don't think that the special effects are that impressive like I mean, they're not that impressive but I I mean I, I was okay with a few things you know the movie looks great you know it, it really does but I just think that they're too cartoony still you know overall I was pretty frustrated if we're still talking specifically about the beginning scene I was ex pretty frustrated with that part with David Yates and when he first started with Order of the Phoenix he notably brought the darkness that was evidence in the books into the films which was great he and does he have did a that very in distinct the, style he did yeah. that in this film as well however the lightning was literally way too bright. Like I, that first. <laughs> oh, in the, in the opening first, scene. Yeah, in the opening oh, scene, like okay. the the lightning because it's a storm. And literally, I was had my eyes half closed because it was way too bright in contrast with the darkness that was going on and some of the camera work. I didn't appreciate the angles. I mean, I could understand some of it was like they were trying to do from the character's viewpoint. 
but then it would be like really zoomed in on their face and you're like, Ugh. it was disorienting for me. Now let's go ahead and move on to our real ratings. I'll go ahead and start off guys. The first movie I could not stand, like throughout the whole movie, I was criticizing X, Y, Z and whatever I could. I just did not like it at all. In fact, I would have given that one and a half reels, which is my lowest rating ever for any of these movies that Man, we've reviewed. That's probably because you're not, you know, a hardcore Harry Potter fan. Nah, I think it's but, because it sucked. No, well, you know, people <laughs> that really know the the Harry Potter, you know, arc, lore. Yeah, the lore, the universe. There, there's there's a lot of things to appreciate. But I can see how someone who goes into that movie just as a movie, I can see why you would be okay. disappointed. Well, yeah. I'd love to talk about it, but this is about the sequel, so I'll go ahead talk about this one. I thought it was a little bit better than the first one, which isn't saying much, the bar is low, right? <laughs> um, because this actually had a, a semi-interesting plot, okay? Uh, it's moving on. It, it Obviously, it feels like a transitional movie, okay? Yeah, very much um, so. All that said, I still didn't really enjoy the movie. Uh, a lot of it, uh, there's a lot of things wrong with it for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it two and a half reels. The Nun rating. The Nun rating, <laughs> that's right, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't really have anything else to add. Like I said before, I am very disappointed with this movie. I really don't think that it has a lot of rewatch value. I don't have any interest in ever watching it again. <laughs> uh, I really don't. I just, I was bored and I was slightly confused with where the movie was going and then where it ended up was disappointing. I mean, there is a sort of reveal and it's kind of lame is all I'm gonna say. So I'm gonna give this movie two reels. So. <laughs> Are there negative reels? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I just, if you didn't know, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them was originally essentially like a catalog of creatures in the wizarding world. And so I really felt that they're trying to make a storyline with basically a catalog. Mm. And that does not mesh, which mm. is why you have some confusing moments with creatures, and, and that's why the first one really flopped. That's a great insight. Um, additionally, they brought in some random freaking characters without even naming them, and you're mm. like, who is this guy? And then he disappears, and you're like, okay. Oh, so, yeah. if I were not a fan of Harry Potter, and I watched this film with the confusion, I maybe would give this three, three and a half reels. Because I'm a Harry Potter fan, <laughs> I would give it at most one reel. Wow. Wow, that's, that's a big difference. So what you're saying is that a person that is not familiar with the mythology, you think they would like it more? Yes. Okay. All right. And I'm being generous with the one real. It's, it's the Bohemian Rhapsody effect, right? Those who know are harder on it. Those who don't are like, oh, true. It's a great movie. Well, that's it for us. Thank you, Michelle, for being on our show. And let <laughs> us know in the comments below if you're a Harry Potter fan, what you think about this latest installment. What would you have changed? What did you think? And also hit us up on Facebook at Real Screeners. And don't forget the Alamo Draft House is the place to be, guys. Watch a movie there. You'll always love the experience. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to get these reminders. All right. So was Fantastic Beasts the Crimes of Griven... Oh, wow. <laughs> of Griven... Wow. Of Griven... I'm going to try it one more time and if not, I'm just like going to stop. Of Gravy. Grindelwald. Fantastic Beasts the Crimes of Grindelwald is directed by David Yates, who has directed all of the Harry Potter films since Order of the Phoenix and including the first Fantastic Beaks... Beaks... <laughs> 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 Fantastic beaks. <laughs> Where to find that? Bananas. B A N A N A S. Baby.